What's up, my brother? Salute you, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm good. Yeah, how are you? Very good. Very good. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm here today as a student to learn about yourself, and uh, you have some very interesting uh, information for us. Yeah, yeah. I I think it's really interesting. It's certainly, when I first discovered this information, I, to me, it was the most interesting information I'd ever heard. So, And uh, that was, oh, gee, that was about 14 years ago, and it still is. I still believe that it's still the most important information I ever learned. So I reckon it's good stuff I'm going to tell you tonight. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to this point. I mean, was there a health crisis in your life or how did you find yourself in this world of kind of like a uh, medical breakthrough and so forth? Yeah, well, I suppose in my life, I, I, I had a little racing car at one time in my life and I, I uh, crashed it uh, and I woke up three weeks later um, and I think that was in that was in 1989, um, which was a bit a major sort of turning point for my life. Okay, the big because I, I I broke I broke my body up quite bad, and I also um, I had enough in, impact on my brain to put me unconscious for weeks. So so I, I had a lot of recovery to do after that. Okay, so, so was, was that part was that part of how you discovered this this new technology? Well, n not so much, but that started that started me. Uh, uh, on the road to, uh, be un I wanted to know about health because uh, obviously I, I I was suffering a little bit. So I, that's what started my interest in becoming a therapist. And um, because before that, and I still am sometimes an an engineer, so I, I work uh, in the oil industry sometimes when you know when I feel good about it. Um, but I think um, yeah, so that's what got me into therapy, and then. I think the big turning point for this 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 information, which I, I believe, and I, I say this in all sincerity, I believe that the information which I discovered in 2008, but had had actually been going for some 20 years by then, uh, I believe it to be the most significant scientific discovery in the history of mankind, full stop. Uh, I believe it's more significant than everything else that's come before it, because it allows mankind to know what we are and then through that it can teach us how to live so that we live in harmony with our our needs our biological needs okay so so it's, it's a big thing but anyway I, I discovered this uh in 2008 i think it was um when i was trying to help my sister she had a, an autoimmune disease um which doesn't really exist but at that time i used to think it did um, and it was called rheumatoid arthritis and her, her knuckles, you know, if you've seen the condition where the hands all get deformed and the joints all yeah. not mean prime, you know, where the, and the people become very crippled. Yeah. Right. Well, she, she, she was struggling with that and um, she was on serious medication uh, um, to try and stop the inflammation because it's all inflammation, inflammation. Right. So uh, I discovered this in this research and at that time I didn't really know much about it, but I took with I took what I knew at that time, which was basically one scientific paper, and I applied it to my sister's problem, and I could not believe it. Right in front of my eyes, my sister, she disclosed something to me which I had no idea had actually happened, and she was hugely emotional. There was a big, big sort of eruption of emotions. Um, and then once we kind of got through that, and that took a, an hour or two, um, she kind of settled down again. And to cut a really long story short, within within a month, right? Well, within days, she'd stopped all her medication. She just decided to do it herself. And within a month, she'd been back to the hospital for her blood tests. And the doctor actually said to her that, the blood test must be mistaken. So he asked her to come back into the hospital and have them done again, and which she did. And uh, when he got the results back, he couldn't believe his eyes. He said, he says, well, his, his words were, I think, I've never seen methotrexate work so well. You must continue to take that forever. Of course, my sister hadn't told him that she had never taken the methotrexate after that conversation with me. Right. She, she stopped all her medication then. So, you know, that to me was like proof. You know, I, I was kind of introduced. I didn't have to believe this information because I luckily I come at it from a perspective of a therapist and I'd seen it work completely. I mean, more completely than than I could have ever imagined. 
so um so that's that's how, that's how i got into it um and since then you know I, i've i've helped people with um for, well lots of lots and lots of different things i mean there was i just got a testimonial today in fact from a guy who had uh, arrhythmia and he actually contracted arrhythmia because after his brother had died and the brother had made him executor to the will so he, this this gentleman had had to sort out his brother's will okay okay and what he read in the will he didn't like he didn't agree with what his brother was doing with his money but he had to do it because it was his brother's written will and mm -hmm. this trauma this stress that he had to do you know it caused him actually it it, it made his heart turn go it's called a condition called arrhythmia it's when the heart re rhythm just goes all over the place you know it might it might go normal for like it might go to 70 beats a minute then all of a sudden it would go up to 120 130 beats a minute and the poor guy was feeling exhausted. He, he just he didn't know what was going on with his body. Right. So, well, anyway, after about three sessions of therapy with him, we discovered what when it started and what was causing it. And then we we asked him. You know, we did some stress relief techniques, and he actually had a, he actually had to have a conversation with someone in his family as well. And well, let, me, whole, let, me, let me ask you a question. What? And because and 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 this is, I think, you know, there's a lot of you know. Um, uh, you know, it sounds very interesting. I just want to know what exactly are we talking about? Because I want to get to these pictures because okay. you, showed, you showed me some very powerful yeah. results, yeah. which is what I like. I like results and I like testimony. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and so, you know, can we can we talk a little bit about what is this method? Is it a technology? Is it a method? Is there a philosophy? Can we talk about that? Yeah. Well, so just to finish what I was saying about this guy, when he resolved his stress, the heart started to work perfectly again. Now, this research, which was done by a German doctor, his name was Dr. Hammer. What happened with him was, was he was a very healthy guy. And then his son became very badly injured with a gunshot. And his son took about two months to die or three months to die. And eventually did die under his father's um, treatment because his dad was, you know, the, a, a surgeon and a doctor. OK, so. When he died, his son died, he, he himself contracted cancer within months of that. And he thought, by Jove, right, is there is a connection? So what this guy did was he thought, right, the brain must be involved if there was stress. So he took photographs of everybody's brain that was under his care. So he was a, he was a, a head oncologist in a cancer research clinic. And he just basically scanned everybody's brain that had cancer. And he discovered that everybody that had the cancer had a shadow in the brain in the same place. So the same cancer had the same shadow in the same place. Mm -hmm. And he then discovered that when they resolved the issue that had caused it, the shadow went through a process and eventually disappeared. And the right. cancer went through a process and eventually disappeared. Right. right? So his, 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 his technique came from his own experience and then having the it foresight to think, right, the brain's involved. And then photographing the brain and on his death i mean the guy died in 2017 and i believe that there is a, a well in excess of 40,000 cases cases in in his in his research portfolio right and 100.0 percent of them all of them 100 percent of them it's the same process the shock the mark in the brain the symptom it doesn't matter what the symptom doesn't matter if it's cancer or if it's candida. It doesn't matter if it's eczema or if it's um, Crohn's disease. It's all the same. OK, the shock's different and the area in the brain's different, but the process is the same. The body's doing something because it's been affected by a shock. And so he he he, he has develop five biological laws but tonight i'm just going to tell people about two of them the first law is that every disease and i'm talking every disease except accidents and poisoning and severe starvation right except those three things right everything else is caused by an unexpected trauma big or small everything everything prime i mean there's nothing you can tell me that is not caused by this, provided it's not a, a, an accident or, you know, 
poisoning to death with chemotherapy or something like that, right? That's different. But out with those things, right? Okay, everything. And what what the body does, and this is his his, his first law is that everything is caused by a shock, and his last law, the fifth one, is that the body tries to ch no, sorry, the 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 brain, the psych the psyche, it's called. It's it's like your autopilot in an airplane. It's subconscious, but it's not your subconscious. It's it's something that sits beside the subconscious. It's not the subconscious. And it, it controls the body. And what happens is when we suffer the shock, the psyche catches that shock and instantly starts a process in the body, which is trying to adapt the body to help you survive that shock. OK, so every disease is part of a process which is trying to help us survive in a practical biological way. Right. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, and how that applies, you know, let's say a woman with breast cancer, now, if, if it's glandular breast cancer. So that woman has suffered a shock about her child or it could be about her sister somebody she cares for somebody she absolutely cares for in her in her inner circle of, of people that she loves so she suffers a trauma let's say that that person's um had an accident or they become very unwell well her body then says well i'm going to help you nourish that child so you need more breast breast tissue to nourish the child because that's what happens in nature so the body is like the body's trying to help that woman sort her emotional problem because she's got an emotional problem with the well-being of her child so right. if, if you like it's all about love going around in a circle the body wants to help the woman because the woman wants to help the child right right and it creates more breast tissue to create more milk to nourish the child and it really doesn't matter if the woman is 18 or if she's 38 or 78 the body's got the same reaction and that same process goes with all diseases it really it obviously it's a different shock right so there's obviously different ways that you can contract the disease too but that's but that's one of them right is that what you're trying to say well i'm trying to say because you can't I, can, I, can, can you, talking, you can't, let me just let me just say this you can contract the disease obviously through foods um Right. So there's another. Right. Well, I mean, well, what kind of disease? You, I mean, all, all all the symptoms in the body are controlled by the brain. This is what this is what I mean. This is what his research showed. Right. Okay. Um, out out of the forty thousand cases, um, all of them w was that. So if they came with Crohn's disease, okay. Some people say it, it can be the food you eat, or in, but what what this guy discovered is that actually. The mechanism which causes the symptom is the biological brain working. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. So it causes um, the biological brain also controls the action of all microbes. So, like, so bacteria, they don't. We don't catch bacteria. They're they're actually within our body, and um, the body uses those bacteria to help sort the the biological process out. Right. So let me, let me, so let me, let me awesome. well, you know, I heard it's interesting you say that because I, I heard this um, some time ago, a couple of years ago, I had stumbled across a report that was talking about um, that uh, certain diseases, the root cause of them was depression um, wow. and the idea that, you know, people who struggle with depression or bitterness and unforgiveness, this wasn't that long ago either. I had, I had heard something like that. Is that kind of similar to that? Um, it's not. It, it's kind of similar, but it's not the same. What 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 actually causes these diseases is when we get an unexpected shock and the conscious mind isn't able to react. So the biological brain catches it, and it actually tries to change our body, your body, my body, everyone's body. Right? It tries to change it in a way that helps it in a way that it feels the biological brain feels that will help the person okay. and so why it's because, why so it's difficult to understand, i just want to say one thing the reason it's difficult to understand is is because the biological brain was programmed millions of years ago 
it's not a complex thing. So it 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 looks at all life stresses in a practical, like almost like an animal way. So that's why it makes the wrong decision. Right. Okay. So how, so, so how does the treatment actually work? Because I want to get to some of these, uh, yeah. some of the testimonies, some of the pictures that you've shown yeah. me. And so how does how does one now using this particular, um, yeah. this understanding, this technology, yeah. how does one then treat the condition? Okay. Well, the only way that you can guarantee the body goes into a healing process is to resolve the issue. To resolve the life issue. Now, sometimes that's impossible. That is impossible. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So and also, how, so how, how do you actually identify the issue? Because this could be so many different things. How does one know, say, hey, uh, yeah. the, traumatic, the traumatic event that caused this particular disease was this traumatic event versus yeah. that traumatic event? I'll, I'll tell you a secret then. I'll tell you how you do that, Prime, okay? You look at the symptoms because your body is the teller of your truth, right? Your body doesn't lie. We can lie and we can fool we can fool ourselves, right? Into thinking we're hard or to thinking we're tough or to thinking that we can withstand stuff, right? We can we can fool our own minds into that, but right. your body tells you the truth, right? So what you do is you look at the symptom. If you if you're looking at eczema, you know you know what eczema is, you know when you get a rash on your skin, you know some some people get eczema in their arms up here. Uh, I can't see where the camera is here, but you know, they get eczema. Do you understand right. eczema? Yes. Eczema. Eczema. I think in America you say eczema. Eczema. No, we say eczema. Okay. Yeah. I know right. people in my family who have, who have eczema. Right. So what if you want to, I mean, I can tell you now that the cause of eczema is a separation conflict when we feel somebody has been almost like it's been torn away from our contact. So you've lost contact with somebody or it can be the opposite where you've had contact that you really didn't want. The body the body acts the same way. So your question was, how do you fix it? Well, this is how this is how you from a perspective of what I see. My opinion is this is how you fix it, because I've got to stay within my my disclaimer rules. OK, right. You look at the symptom. When did it start? When did it really, really, really start? Right. And then that tells you when your biological brain started with the issue. So that tells you where the issue is in your life. It might be 20 years ago. OK, it can even be pre-birth. I mean, it very often is pre-birth, as a matter of fact. Um, Dr. Hammer said that um, um, you know when they put the ultrasound scans on that it can it can affect that the child can no longer hear its mummy's heart and that causes a trauma and the, the child comes out already born with eczema okay right. repeat that one more time okay so what dr hammer taught us he, he discovered that some children are are born with a rash on their bodies and he strongly said that Ultrasound scans are not good because it interferes with the the the, bra the baby's brain and stops the baby. It makes the feel. It actually makes the baby feel that the mother has died because it can no longer hear the heartbeat. So the baby suffers a global separation program, right? And it creates eczema. Very interesting. Right. So if you've got eczema, right? then you need to look at when that eczema started and then think, right, what happened just before that? You will have had, it's impossible to have the eczema unless something's happened. So there is something there. And it might be something that you, 20 years later, you might think, man, that's no big deal. But when you was only three years old, it was a very big deal, you see? So the brain gets stuck in this little loop and the eczema continues. Right. Interesting. So, yeah, but but then let's 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 look at something else. Let's look at um, uh, somebody. I worked with somebody who had Crohn's disease. They had it for about sixteen years when I worked with them. Okay, so Crohn's disease is, is of the digestive system, and and her body was the digestive system was basically is coming to pieces. It was really falling. You know, she had inflammation and and diarrhea and blood and everything. She, she you know she couldn't she couldn't have a good life. Right. So, turned out that. 16 years prior to that, something had happened in, 
in her first she was her first love affair basically she had found true love at the age of 16 and something happened in that relationship which she could not digest it it was something that her partner had done at a party and it caused them to split up right and it's something that you know we a lot of us go through right you know it's, it's not an unusual thing right but this person's biological brain kept on trying to digest that issue so therefore it started the process called what we call Crohn's disease it can be ulcerative colitis it's all the same thing it's all the same cause it's just a different part of the, the digestive system but guess what right when we about after it took a while with this person it took about eight sessions but eventually when she had enough confidence to actually own up to what had happened and she really just let it out and she really made the connection between what had happened and the symptom within three weeks she had no more Crohn's disease gone now she had, she had to go through a process she had to go through severe diarrhea and pain because the body all of a sudden tried to repair everything that had been going on for 16 years so that 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 has a consequence but yeah. at the end of it now she's living the dream she's living the dream perfect digestion so let me ask you a question have you guys created some type of uh chart that kind of outlines which type of condition goes to which yeah. type of the disease that's that's in the references i've given you so the the best the best source of this is um www.free-new-medicine.com so that's going to be in the link uh, that you you can attach to this interview with me right and that did guy you, wrote, did you send that to, to my admin that's that's the that's one of the, the email that's one of the websites yeah, that's, that that's one of the websites yeah prime oh, in the description box the, that guy was um he was actually uh, an Olympic athlete at one time in his life, uh, doing windsurfing of all things, right? And he studied with, with Dr. Hammer, and he took all of Dr. Hammer's learnings and wrote a book with them. And it's the most beautiful book, and it teach, it shows us what causes your heart disease, what causes your cancer, what causes your Crohn's disease, your eczema. And then it gives you the tools to, to, uh, uh, to sort of untangle yourself from that issue. And... And uh, well, that's all good then. You know, it, it's just it's what life's about. You know, it. it uh, yeah. So, so that that scan that you've 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 put up there, Prime. Okay, nice one. Can you see the red arrows on it? Right. Yep. Well, everybody that has the common cold will have that mark in the brain. Right. And when and when the common cold heals up, that mark disappears. I think wow. that's the research. Okay, that that's 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 hundred percent true in forty thousand cases. So, in, out of forty thousand cases, it's been right every time. Okay, so that so, little mark. Let me let me let me just let me just push back here just a little bit. So you mean it? So now, okay, hold on. Let me just come back in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Okay. So yeah. now people are going to obviously say, okay. <laughs> Okay, so you mean to tell me I, I didn't catch a cold because I walked outside, it's 30 below, and I no, have a you did not. I you caught did a not. cold because I was upset with my mother. That's what the brain scan tells us. 100% of the times. 100% of the time. And I I'm, I am telling you that my experience of that is it, that it's, in fact, true, right? Well, but it's 100% yeah, of the time. You absolutely do. And I'll tell you another thing that you don't know about a cold is that Every disease is part of a process that has two halves. It's like a, a dollar bill. It's got a top side and a bottom side, right? Now, you cannot have a dollar bill with two bottom sides or two top sides. It's not a dollar bill, right? You agree? Right. Right. So every biological program has two halves. It's got a conf when it's when when the emotional conflict is active and when the emotional conflict is in resolution. And the cold actually happens when the conflict goes into resolution. So it's actually a symptom of healing. The common cold, you don't actually catch a common cold because you've actually, it's a symptom that your body is healing from a stink conflict, which affects the, the lining of the nose. I mean, I'll explain to you, then you'll understand, right? In nature, the sense of smell is important, right? Right. Yeah? Yeah. Right. So if we have a stink conflict, it means that our biological conflict, our biological body 
has a shock and it thinks, oh my God, something smells bad or something smells dangerous or something I don't like. There's something dangerous here. And I'm in, in a, I'm in a situation where I don't feel safe. So what it does, it causes, uh, it's called the process of necrosis and it causes necrosis inside the nose and, and all these tubes in your face and around your chest and that, right? right. And when that, when that conflict or the, the emotional shock goes into resolution, let's say you go on holiday. This is when it usually happens, right? You go on holiday. You go, oh, man, I'm out of work now. I'm safe. I'm back home with my family. I'm just going to enjoy myself. I'm going to have a few beers and not worry about life, okay? The, that conflict goes into resolution. And then all the tubes, all this, the, 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 it's called squamous epithelial tissue. It's the lining of the tubes in your nose and on your face. They all start to swell up and become inflamed and you get, mucus in it and we call it a cold you say oh man you've caught the cold oh yeah well i got a cold just when i went holiday too yeah it's because you've both gone into the healing phase and the proof of it is the brain scan there is no arguing with it when you look at the evidence it's so factually correct that you have you just you have to agree with it i mean no matter how no matter how skeptical you are, when you see the evidence, you cannot help but realize it's true. Okay, so let's look at the these some of these pictures. Yeah. Um, this is this is pretty phenomenal, but you know this is also um, kind of like a personal decision. It's not so much a prescription, or it's not even really a technology. It's a therapy, so it will require a person to actually do some internal healing themselves and make some decisions and have some yeah. reflection. You've got to and, look after yourself. And as well, if you know something's a healing symptom, well, then you don't need to worry about it. Right. Well, okay. So let's let's look at some of these pictures and let's talk about what we got going on here. Okay. That's a nice, that's, that, that's the common cold that we're talking about there. Okay. Now here, let me blow this up. Oh, can you blow that up? Yeah. Right. A little so blurry, but okay, there it is. There it is. That looks a bit complicated, but it's it's really dead simple, right? And the black the the, the black line that you can see the black line. Uh, there's a green. There's a green system. The autonomic nervous system there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now that's that's your normal day night rhythm of your your autonomic nervous system, and your autonomic nervous system is the nervous system which controls your bodily functions. It's not the conscious nervous system, which you would, uh, you, you know, you used to write a book or you, 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 I'm using my hands. That's conscious. But the nervous system that controls all my bodily functions is not, it's, it's not consciously controlled. It's, it's called autonomic, right? What happens is you can see the first pink arrow. That pink arrow signifies when we suffer a, a stress conflict, a shock, a biological shock, an emotional shock. And you can see that it throws the autonomic nervous system into it throws it into confusion in the blue section so you can see that that normal day night rhythm is interrupted and it's now stuck in a in some kind of unnormal state right can you see right. that yeah you're talking about the wavy line that look like wavy water yes exactly right now, that that situation can last minutes or a whole lifetime we can be in conflict shock all our lives, or it can just be something short. So, it, it, so the length of time, length of okay. time depends on the shock. So, let's say, um, let's say, for example, the person that had Crohn's disease I told you about, she was in it for sixteen years, right? So, when that person was about sixteen years old, fifteen years old, she suffered the first pink arrow when when something happened in a relationship, right? Now, she stayed active for sixteen years until she met me. And we eventually found the issue and resolved it. And that's when the second pink arrow happened. And you can see then her, her autonomic nervous system went into a big red dip, the first red dip there. Okay. And then it goes, it goes into that little arrow at the top, and then it goes into another big dip, and then she's back to normal. And that same process happens with all diseases. So all diseases are part of this two-phase process. For example, adeno cancers, they grow in the blue in that blue section, whereas in the red section, you have your heart attacks or your eczema or your flu. Right? So you right. can see all 
diseases, or I call them symptoms now, all these symptoms are just part of a process. And if we understand the process, it's like being given a compass when you're lost. It's like, oh my God, I know where I'm going now. I know why I've got the cold. You can think, oh, well, that's just because I've left my work for a long weekend because, you know, it's been stressing me. Now I'm at home for a long weekend and I come down with a cold. Ah, that's, I understand it. Yeah, so so that's a picture of a little girl in, in Africa, I presume, right? She, she's obviously, you can see she's got a great big tummy and her legs are also swollen up, but she's very severely malnourished. Now, what Dr. Hammer discovered was when we become, um, we have a, a um, abandonment, I see an isolation of isolation or abandonment con type of conflict. The kidneys stop working properly, and, it, and this is what causes 90% of all kidney problems, right? So, all these kidney transfusions and all that, this is what's behind it, according to the research, okay? And it is that the kidneys to save water because because the body thinks oh my lord i have to i have to save water because i'm abandoned or i'm in or my existence is under threat right because that girl must have been in a situation where that was happening right the kidneys close they're like valves they just go clunk clunk and the kidneys close and all the water doesn't go doesn't go out through your urine and it, it forms pools of water in the body. So if you look at that girl, you can see her big fat tummy. And yet I bet you there's no food inside that tummy at all. It's all fluid, all, it's called third spacing. So it's, it's a process, uh, it's a, a, a medical term called third spacing. What it means is all the fluid that your kidney should be peeing out is going into your body to keep, because your biological brain is trying to protect your water supply or it's trying to conserve water. Okay, so and you, if you yeah, so what's that one? Let's uh, let's have a let, let's blow that one up, and that's a nice one. Okay, so see that there. Yeah. What that what that research shows us with a hundred percent certainty is that according to the research, okay, is that that person will have a heart attack when they fully resolve that issue. So that tells you that heart attacks are not caused by cholesterol, or they're not caused by uh, you know uh, bad food right they're caused by the brain as it reacts to a territorial a territorial conflict and a heart attack actually happens at a precise point do you remember that do you remember that graph i showed you prime with the, the arrow remember there was an arrow in the middle of, of the second half of it there was the two big red dips and then an arrow in the middle Mm -hmm. Well, that is the exact moment when a heart attack happens in, in every in everyone. Wow. Okay. So imagine imagine knowing that. I mean, imagine you. Firstly, I mean, that's, you know, you know, it's massive. It, it's uh, I I don't expect everyone to believe this, but what they want people to do is to go to the websites and check it out with their own mind, right, and see if it feels good. Okay. So that's um um shingles. Right now, can you see how it's a clear line right down the middle of her forehead and right along underneath her eye? Right. Right. right now, right. they tell us that shingles is caused by a virus. But. Right. If a virus. It was so small, you can you can't even see them. If it could get in the body, it'll go everywhere. So the virus wouldn't just decide to go on the left hand, the left half of somebody's face and not the right half. I mean, that, that's just ridiculous to even think that, right? right. But, but what Dr. Hammer discovered was that is caused by a conflict which affects the underneath layer of skin. And it's like mm. an attack conflict or, or an attack against the integrity of somebody. And believe it or not, that symptom is in the second phase when it's trying to heal. So... It, it allows us to understand, oh, right, I'm healing, so I better make sure that I don't go. You, you find out when you start healing, and then you work out what the conflict was, and then you say to yourself, right, well, if that conflict was capable of causing me to have this condition, of, uh, you know, um, this skin condition, then I need to think differently about how I'm interacting with that person or with that issue because it's making me ill. 
Right. Yeah, so that's shingles, okay? So that, that's a pitch of shingles. And that's another proof <coughs> that, <coughs> I'm not sure what that is. Yes. Uh, uh, we've, done we've done that one, we've done that one. There. Now see, there, there's another condition, right? Herpes, okay? Oh. We're, told, oh. we're, we're, told, we're told, right? Oh, herpes is called by, caused by a virus, but nobody's ever found a virus. But what Dr. Hammer found was that if you took a brain scan of that person, you could see exactly in the brain exactly which tissues of the body are affected. So it's nothing to do with a virus. It's to do with a stress affecting the brain and the brain causing the symptom in the body. Oh, my God. Oh. So it doesn't, um, come, it doesn't come from you being a filthy animal and out there. No, no. But you see what happens. I'll tell you what happens, right? No. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me... I can I can tell you I can tell you a personal story about disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. I, can tell you personal, I can tell you a personal story about um cold sores, right? Oh. Herpes, right? I know ne I never used to have it, and then I I had a girlfriend oh. about a long time ago, right? And she she used to get she used to get cold sores. Now she would tell me, she says, oh, keep away. Don't kiss me. Don't kiss me. They're very, very contagious. And I was like, oh, they're not contagious. I don't believe that. But I did. I didn't know anything then. Right. So anyway. About, oh, we were together for about six, eight months, maybe like. Right. And then we split up and it broke my heart when we split up. Right. Right. Then I started getting cold sores. And I thought, oh man, I must. She must have been. She must have had a virus on her lips or something. And now I've caught them. And now she's she's finished with me. And all I'm left with is cold sores. I thought to myself, right? And I was thinking, you know, that's like I was, you know, I, I thought, well, that's life, right? So then I discovered the German new medicine, right? German new medicine, as it's properly called, and it explains that it's a separation conflict, an oral separation conflict, to be exact. So what I did was I did therapy on myself and I sorted my head out about the cold sores because I used to work in an oil rig and every two weeks I'd go away for two weeks on round about day 10 or 11 of my trip. I would get a cold sore every time and I would just be coming home to my family with a cold sore. It's like, oh man, why am I getting a cold sore just before I come home? It's just really bad luckless, but it went on every all year so then i just then i thought about it. i thought yeah it's because i'm going home to the ones i love so the body goes into healing and the cold what about, okay but let me just push back a little but what about kissing the filthy slimy whore <laughs> come on you gotta be come on i mean right listen let me just say something okay let me just say something i'm all for self healing and i'm all for it but when you kiss the filthy slimy whore then the bump pops up on the mouth come on come on no, I, I i look i i'm, I'm look, look the thing is right is that biology takes no prisoners it doesn't care what your conscious mind says about anything your biological brain is inside your head and it's controlling your body whether you like it or whether you don't like it right and right if you feel oh my god that person's filthy i don't want to touch them oh my god they've touched me or i've used the same spoon or the same cup right then do you know what'll happen well, you you will suffer an oral separation of it and you will catch the shock which causes the cold sore so you catch it completely and totally by the shock of thinking you have touched an infected person that's what causes it Okay, so well, that's according to the research. Okay, so what I did was I gave myself a good talking to, and I said, you know something, I'm really sorry for what happened between me and this person long decades ago, but I understand now what's going on, and lo and behold, the cold source just stopped. Right, and I continued to work offshore for another three years after that, and I never got any more cold source because. I was able to resolve, I could remember the initial trigger event which caused it. And then I was able to go in with my therapy techniques to go into that and kind of get over it in a, in a deep way. 
and the cold sore stopped and they've never come back. So, okay, so if somebody wants to try this particular method, what would they need to do? Well, I suggest that they first, they must download the, the book. There's a free ebook on that, uh, 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 which is free hyphen new hyphen medicine.com. That guy, all he asks is a donation. I, I would I would urge everyone to give a damn good donation for that because it, it's life-saving, life-saving literature, right? So you go, you get the book and you look up your, if you've got cold sores, if you've got herpes, if you've got hemorrhoids, if you've got cancer, if you've got stomach ulcer, don't matter, right? You go into the book, you look it up and you say, man, okay, this is what's going down there. My poor body is trying to help me overcome some kind of issue. And then you can look at when the symptoms started and you're going to say to yourself, okay, so it was something round about then. It's nasty. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's wickedly good. It's, uh, I, I, I tell well, you, say, I, you know, you're, you're brave for putting out this out, but I think you're right. I think you're on to something here. Um, I'm definitely interested in learning more about it. I would love to hear more well, testimonials from, from individuals. Well, it's my from. opinion. As I've said, Prime, look, everything's my opinion. And my opinion, I am just quoting from this research, which is there for everybody to see, right? And, okay, I mean, it's good because it puts your health back in your own hands. Okay. Yeah, that's well, a good thing. Right. And that's it can also be good if you stay away from the slimy whores I mean, <laughs> i'm not going there hey, i'm so not going there because you know they can, catch, they can catch it from other women can catch it from men and men can catch it. so uh, there's no fingers pointing do you know what i mean it's it's, slimy we're, guys all there too. Together. we're all in this game together brother okay <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> well, so tell us so tell us about your website and um tell us what we well, can find on your website my, my website is a simple little website and it's very much geared towards people with with um like say, ulcerative colitis and crohn's and such but I, I, my work it really you know it's i my understanding of disease is that the body is causing it to try and help you because you're troubled with something that's happened in your life and there's brain there's a whole pile of evidence to back that up so my work is all about helping you find and resolve your stress conflicts which are causing your symptoms your body then will sort itself out yeah let me ask you a question as we as we prepare to to, to um in this interview let me ask you a question what do you think the future of this kind of discovery is i mean do you feel like this is going to be like some breakthrough thing and because yeah. ultimately ultimately this requires a little participation. I mean, obviously, a person has to be willing to want to deal with internal issues. I mean, everybody is not always willing to kind of go into their childhood mentally. So you have to be kind of like willing to do that, right? Yeah. Well, I believe that this information is the most significant information in the history of, of, of science, I think, because it tells us about us and it gives us the power to be responsible it shows us how to live responsibly, right? Because if, if we're getting if we're getting symptoms, it says we are we're we've stressed our bodies to the point where it's trying to adapt to help us. Now, it puts the power. It it's like you know. I mean, we do need you know. You, it's got a process. Mankind's got to go through a process. At the moment, there's a lot of us very, very ill. There's a lot of us sick, right, on medication. Now, I'm not telling people to stop taking medication. Of course not. What I'm saying is discover what's actually causing your problem and then work with your doctor or work with your health provider to find a way that helps you overcome the if it's if it interests you right i mean some people are happy just to take pills and that's good for them if you're the type of person who wants to say natural right then it just gives you an option and if we know this stuff before we get ill then when we get the diagnosis shot we know instantly what to do see if everybody knew this now okay if everybody knew this then when we get a symptom whatever it is we would know what's caused it and then we'd say ah okay right that's i have to sort that out right yeah right. and well, I, I, think that, I think yeah i think i think i think I think, I think I think that's the most powerful thing about it is that yeah. um it 
if we knew it first, if, if people knew these laws, there's only five laws. I mean, you know, it doesn't take so long to learn five things, right? There's five laws. When you learn those five laws, you then will be able to um, understand your symptoms and you'll understand that it's been caused by something and you'll give you a chance to fix that before it gets too, too consolidated. Because when things become too consolidated, if you catch cancer and you can you can get on the top of that right away, well, then Dr. Hammer discovered that they got better quite well. But if that if that has grown to a massive lump, then, of course, you need medical intervention then because it's, it's beyond your own ability to cope with that. So, yes, you know, the medicine, I'm not saying medicine's a bad thing or a good thing. I'm just saying that it can be part of your healing. But this knowledge can be another part of your healing, which can help you not catch the disease in the first place. Or it can help that's you. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was, was going to ask you, because I yeah. think that would be the, the probably the biggest rev, rev, revolution is to, that for people to yeah. make a connection early to keep yes. you from the trauma, to keep you from the disease. Versus exactly. Because yeah. um, what that's the most important thing is, is to when you get the symptom, you suddenly will know, ah, that's my biological brain saying it's telling me that I've got an issue with that. So I need to sort that out when it's fresh in your mind. And when, when the symptom hasn't been going on so long, because the longer the symptom goes on, your brain kind of gets used to it. You know, right. it, it becomes harder to solve the, it becomes harder to solve the, the, the stress conflict. If your body's kind of used, if it's been living in this stress conflict for 20 years. Right. right. So, so that, that's my thing, right? I, I, this Thursday, uh, Thursday coming, I'm doing a Zoom call, right? Anybody, um, they need to go through my website and we can send them a link to it. But basically, um, I'm just going to talk about it a little bit more detail and people might want to put a question in. And if they want a question, uh, provided that there's not too many people, but, um, you know, I don't think there will be, but uh, I will try my best to answer you know, just give my in understanding of the biology behind why they have that symptom. Okay. All right. Well, yes, this that, website. That's gonna be, yeah, this, this Thursday, I think we've got it. I'm going to do it maybe every month or something. So people need to, even if they, if they watch this after Thursday, it's going to be happening again and again. So, cause uh, I realize that there's a, there's a big interest. Just, I think the world's changing, you know, just, I think people are getting more in, in asking more questions and becoming more enlightened about yeah, stuff. Yeah, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there is somewhat of a health revolution going on right now, and I think people are I looking, think so, yeah. They're yeah. looking for solutions that they can't find in the pharmaceutical industry. But I want to thank you for coming, my brother. This is very interesting. I think you're definitely on to something, and uh, you know, I would love to see how this thing uh, shakes out because, um, you know, I think as the more people kind of start to understand some of the things you're talking about, we may have uh, maybe less less cancer and a lot of less of a lot of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I'd just like to say, you know, this research is just research. It's never been verified by the medical industry, um, but then it's never been disproven by the medical industry. So it's, it's in a sort of strange position, this research. And it's, it's it, it, everything I've said is just my heartfelt opinion, but I'm certainly not giving advice to people. I want to make that quite clear because that yeah, absolutely uh, everybody's health is their responsibility. It's, it's, uh, it's good. Well, it, one of the things I try to tell people, too, is the importance of a good testimony. You know, testimonies kind of resolve kind of everything. I mean, what, and I don't, even even with my products that I promote myself, I don't really rely too yeah. much on my, my, my marketing strategies. I, I try to rely on what people say after they try the product. So um, yeah. there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the website. Give my man a good look. And, um, you know, it starts with educating yourself and being aware yeah. of what you're saying, because you're making a good point. I mean, it's, it's very powerful, the fact that, you know, you have uh, evidence that, you know that this that the brain is the origin of disease ultimately and it's very interesting so let's see how it shakes out but um, in terms of the slimy the hoochie mama <laughs> I don't know. I, well like you say it works both ways you know <laughs> all right my brother until next time my brother i appreciate you for everything okay peace